Here we go. And I'll also uh, turn on my... And these are cam gears, and at the end is 
the rack and pinion gear, which is uh, in the steering mechanism on lots of cars. So we, it, as I say, it, it's kind of a fun thing, and we like to show it to our visitors. There's a wooden one like this down in the visitor center. Okay, well back to what they did here 150 years ago. I think, as I mentioned, this was a maintenance shop. They fixed things that broke. And this is an example of a gear that had broken teeth. So they'd bring it in here and say, please fix it or make us a new one. Now the new one would look like this. So the first thing they did was to get a piece of metal big enough to put, put this piece of metal in the lathe. And in the lathe, they could go back and forth and cut the shoulder and maybe drill the hole. And then they could put a keyway in here and then be parked in there. The last thing they'd want to do would be to cut the teeth. And they could buy a tool that looks similar to this go back and forth and cut the teeth. And they did that on a milling machine. I have a milling machine over here. Okay. Here. And this is the workpiece. And this is the cutting tool. And the cutting tool goes around. And uh, I can engage the table. Yeah, there you go. Now this is turning, so the workpiece is going slowly going toward the window. And you go back and forth, and each time you go back and forth, you raise, you raise the workpiece up a little bit to make the groove a little deeper. And when you get one groove deep enough, then you rotate the workpiece a little bit and cut the next groove. Want to make a gear with 15 teeth, you do that 14 times, and then you hope you're in the right place. Right? <laughs> so they, they had the geometry all figured out. These, these machines had an indexing wheel, and, it, and you want 15 teeth to get an indexing wheel with 15 equally spaced holes, and the axis of the indexing wheel is geared to the axis of the workpiece. So, that, so you use this for positioning your work. You do it very accurately. And as I said, they had the, the, uh, the geometry all figured out. Had lots of different indexing wheels and lots of different cutters. So it was a very versatile machine. But you still took a very small cut. And they tell me it would take them about two weeks to make a gear of this size. And so it was important then that they, that they repaired things. And these are some examples of repaired gears. Uh, th this one had the uh, uh, broken tooth, so they drilled the holes, threaded them, and put in these studs to rebuild the tooth. And you could put this in your sluice gate or whatever. It might last the two weeks to make a new one. It would take the a new one. And here's one that had, uh, where they machined the gear away, the tooth away completely and bolted on a new tooth. So it, they, they really had to use their heads on repair as well as how to make a new one. So I think it's a very interesting place to work. Yes. How, how did they shift the belt to change the speeds on the machines? How did they change the speed? Right. From one, from one... Yeah, well, on these, on these down here, you, you have a long, that's close, right here. See, see this, uh, this little guy? Yeah, that's about it.
is a drill press. Drill press made here in Wilmington, Delaware, in 1869. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty neat, pretty big one. And this wheel allowed to move the drill sideways. Loosen this and swing it out and drill a whole lap here. And uh, I'll turn it on for you.